Redditors who've walked in on your partner or significant other cheating. How did you react in that moment? Story 1. I dated the cutest little doll-faced pixie-type hipster chick for about 4 years, lived together and the whole deal. Turns out this sweet little girl was a freaking chronic cheater like she literally could not keep her panties on. Girlfriend said she was out with the ladies, but I caught her being dropped off by an acquaintance of mine after a date they had together. The dude, in a panic, said, I forgot you two were dating, some crap even though he was at our housewarming party two months prior. I guess she had left her phone in his car, so he drove back to our house to give it to her. I answered the door and he looked stunned. I wasn't supposed to be home, as was I. My girlfriend ran to the door and stood between us and I could hear her breathing and it was different. Like I could hear the panic in her lungs, she started talking real fast, trying to explain to me why this guy, I only ever see at parties and stuff, had her phone in his car, and he just stood there trying to go along with it. I put two and two together, like suddenly processing weeks of events really rapidly in my mind, and realizing that this was in fact a scenario of infidelity, it's been going on for some time. I tossed him into the front yard, he stood next to his car with the door open, trying to apologize. I shoved him in his car and told him to drive off before I broke his nose. That freak looked so scared that I oddly look back on that awful moment with a bit of pride and confidence in my manliness. But of course, I took her back. Months later, my best friend, female, walked in on her sleeping with said best friend's roommate, also female. My best friend drove over to my house immediately and told me. Turns out she had been with at least five other people, men and women, while we were together. Going to the cabin with the girls? Nope, week-long hookup fest with another person. Going to a festival with the family? Nope, drugs and booze with another. I was so freaking naive to not see it, but so goes with young love. You never would have guessed this girl was a whore by looking at her. Not all these chicks look like scumbag Stacy. Anyway, when we started dating originally, I had left the army to go to university. During one of the last conversations we had throughout the awful breakup process, she said, whatever you do, please don't join the army again. I couldn't handle you being hurt. Uh, yeah, screw you, witch. Re-enlisted as soon as possible and years later, I have never been happier. Anyway, never take back a cheater. Story 2. I'd actually come home a week earlier than I was supposed to from the Air Force. This was a good 15 years ago, maybe. And figured I'd surprise her since she'd always talk about how much she misses me, would always send me pictures of her in the mail, and write these long letters talking about our future together. Naturally, I assumed she would be more than excited to see me walk in the door a week early. So, pulled up to the house and figured she was home because her car was there, so I was quiet as possible. Even parked my car down the street a little so she didn't see me pull up and ruin the surprise. Quietly put the key in the lock and slowly twisted, opened the door and the living room was dark. I thought, hmm, maybe she got picked up by some friends and went out somewhere. Oh well, even better. I'll set up our room by going to get some flowers and making everything look all romantic and irresistible. Hey, it's been a few months, I was a bit pent up at that point. So I start walking toward the bedroom and I hear this rhythmic squeaking noise followed by a deep grunt. My instant reaction was someone broke in and tried to rip something off the wall so I went into ass kicking mode until a few seconds later, I heard a high pitched moan of a female. Yeah, I recognized that sound pretty well and knew what was happening. Being in the military, I knew the worst possible thing I could do was anything violent, so I wanted to screw up whatever moment they were having. I walked towards the room very quietly while they went at it. Of course, they didn't hear me because they were far too deep in their actions. Luckily, the door was halfway open, so I got down and started crawling towards the bed out of their line of sight, slithered over to the edge of the bed they were closest to, and started slowly inching my head up to the side until just my eyes were above the edge. It took her a good minute, she was on the bottom, before she even looked over and saw my angry eyes staring at her. She freaked out so bad that she kicked the dude in the face and he fell off the bed and hit his head on the wall. She screamed louder than I've heard anyone scream in my life and bounced off the bed in a flailing, sweaty mess and I heard her act hit the ground with a satisfying thud. I stood up and the guy was in a heap on the floor, scared at this dude in full military garb standing over him with crazy eyes. She finally realized who it was and started bawling her eyes out saying, I'm so sorry, I was lonely, blah blah blah, who cares. I started laughing hysterically and all I said was, well dude, she's your problem now, hope you don't mind herpes. Walked out and blocked her from my life, only to go on and date someone else who made my life miserable for the next 12 years. I really know how to pick them, eh? Story 3. I broke, man. I literally felt something in me die. This was five years ago and only in the last eight or nine months have I felt better about it. 
I walked into my apartment and she and her ex-husband were in my bed, which was a huge screw you to me because they had both had their own places. So I walk in, see them, grab him by the throat, I know, I know, and drag him outside and throw him into the parking lot. I'm a big dude. I'm 6 foot 8, 220 pounds. So I threw him into the parking lot and she's yelling at me, please don't kill him. The hell? I just wanted him out of my house. I wasn't going to hurt or kill the guy. She's running around, picking up her things and his things and shouting excuses at me. Oh, it was just a one-time thing. Oh, we were bored and it was a mistake. Oh, we were drinking this morning and this was stupid. Who freaking drinks in the morning anyway? I just looked at her and said, don't ever speak to me again. You freaking disgust me. Then I fell onto my couch and cried. She was standing there watching me and she tried to walk over and hug me because now she was crying too. I pushed her away from me. I cried nonstop for the rest of the day. Fell into a deep, deep depression. Started doing painkillers, drinking, and pretty much every drug I could get my hands on. Man, I hurt so bad. Mentally, that was just physically crippling. The hardest part wasn't even breaking up with her. It was not talking to her daughter, who was going to be my stepdaughter. I was even saving to buy the ring. She and I were buds, man. We went everywhere together. I took her to preschool. We'd go to the mall every Friday and get ice cream. I'd buy her some toys or some clothes. Whatever struck my eye. I've since moved to a different state, got a good job, got my life back together. I have an amazing girlfriend. She looks at me with love and I look at her and I see hope in her eyes. It took years, but things finally actually turned around. Story 4 About 14 years ago, I caught a girl I was dating for about 6 months, blowing some guy in a bedroom at a party we went to. I walked in, saw her and said, well, we're pretty much done, turned and walked out. I was walking out of the house and she chased me down. She started yelling at me that it was my fault I caught her and that I shouldn't be mad because she was trying to hide it. My wife and I had her as a waitress last year and she's still mad at me. She walked to our table, saw it was me and walked off. About two minutes later, a different person was our server. I assumed she was still mad because when she looked at me, she just glared and walked away. It was one of the worst looks I've ever received from any person in my life. The replacement server did a fantastic job, didn't ask anything about the girl, and I did tip pretty well. And the food was fine, it was a pretty nice place, and I wasn't worried about her ruining her job there over it. I'd been told the servers there can make over $500 a night on tips. Story 5 I walk upstairs, he's walking out of his room in his boxers and closes the door behind him. Tells me he's late for work and still has his hand on the doorknob and won't let go. I already know why. I put my hand over him on the knob and he just looks at me, sighs, and sort of runs down the stairs. I open the door and just see a heap of blankets and the comforter I had just given him for Christmas in the shape of a person. I pull the comforter off and see a naked girl, half awake. I turn around, run downstairs, and see his mom on the couch reading the newspaper. Yes, he did this while he was still living at home. I asked her where he went. She can tell I'm pretty hysterical and asks me what's wrong. I tell her I need to go where he went. She points to the bathroom, I run to it, and it's locked. I take out my bobby pin from my hair, unlock it, and jiggle the door open. I pitifully start hitting his chest while crying and he's just standing there. Then I realize I just need to get the hell out of there, so I run for the front door, but his mother, totally unaware of what's going on, is standing in the door frame, not letting me by until I tell her what's wrong. I ran under her arm and out the door to school. Ugh, one of the worst memories ever. Side note, his mom kicked him out after she realized what happened. Story 6 This wasn't me, but rather was one of my best employees at the company I ran. So Hank was a hardworking guy who preached at church on Sundays, but did odd jobs throughout the week to make ends meet for his wife and three kids. One day, he comes home early and finds his wife in bed with her lover. He opened a drawer, drew his pistol, and put a few rounds into each of them. She survived, he didn't. Manslaughter was a 10-year sentence, but he tells me with good behavior he only did about 8. She obviously has a restraining order against him for the rest of his life, but she lets him see the kids at Christmas. He was a pretty good worker, but when he stared into my eyes and told me he wasn't digging a hole with a shovel, I decided to give him other jobs. Story 7 Not exactly me who caught her, but a friend of mine who lived in my building sold weed, and as a precaution, he had security cameras set up to watch our front door. He had me come over and watch the footage one night. He tells me that when I go to work, some big black guy knocks on the window and my then-girlfriend lets him in. Sure enough, we watched the video and for several days he had recorded like clockwork, I go to work and about half an hour later, here comes a dude knocking and her letting him in. I decided that the next day, I would skip work and leave like normal, but catch them. I left for work, but instead went to my friend's apartment and watched the video. After a bit here came the dude knocking. After she let him in, I waited about 15 minutes then quietly went back. 
I snuck in and there they were in the living room, him on the couch, her on her knees. I freaked them out and he jumped up and left and she cried and said she was sorry and had a problem. Turns out the dude was a crap dealer and she was sucking for crap. She told me it was only once and a mistake. I told her my buddy had it on video for at least a week and she says, he needs to mind his own freaking business. I promptly kicked the witch out and thanked my buddy for saving me from a terrible situation. Story 8 I walked in on my long-time live-in boyfriend and my really good friend having sex in my bed. It was so strange, with like zero emotion. I just walked through my bedroom and started pulling my clothes out of the closet in silence. She was mortified, apologizing. I said, don't worry about it, he's your problem now. Packed up everything that was important to me, walked out and never came back. Moved in with my girlfriends and my life changed radically for the better. He wasn't an evil person, just a profoundly stupid loser that I thought was cool when I was 16. He was 21. We lived together for two super lame years. She did me a gigantic favor. She went on to have multiple kids by multiple fathers. She hooked up with her other best friend's fiance. She was super trashy. After having all of those kids, she wound up going back to and marrying my ex, who now supports those kids on his Walgreens stock boy wages. The same job he had when I met him nearly 30 years ago. I wish them both well and I'm so glad I'm not either of them. Seriously, I'm so happy that they hooked up that night. We would have broken up eventually, but I might have wasted a few more years on that giant null of a relationship. Story 9 Was dating a guy who lived in the same apartment as me, don't crap where you eat folks, named Dave. He was dating this girl Kara when we met, so we were only friends, but we just had this chemistry between us that was insane. A couple of weeks later, he broke up with Kara. A couple more weeks pass and he kisses me. We started seeing each other more often after that. There was a big football game on, probably an FSU game, and we had about 10 people over to watch it. Dave was running late because he had to work late. He walks in the door and one of his buddy yells, Hey man, how's Kara's? I look at Dave, he looks at me, I turn to the TV and sit there for a couple of minutes, then I left. The next day, he caught me as I was walking in my car. I turned to him and very casually told him we should just be friends, then I winked and said bada bing and shot him with each of my pointer fingers. I just started laughing as I walked away because I had never done that before and I honestly thought it was just really funny. Then I went home and cried like a witch. Story 10 I showed up at a party and all of his friends were acting weird and wouldn't tell me where my boyfriend was. When I tried to get in a room, they blocked my way. I knew he was in there. I got past his friends and opened the door and there was my boyfriend of four years naked with a naked chick on top of him. I grabbed her by her hair and yanked her off of him and onto the floor and dragged her out to the party. She knew he was my boyfriend. So I went back to the room, yelled at him and then left the party. On the way out, I ripped his side view mirror off and threw a rock at his windshield. I've since learned how to deal with my anger. I was physically unable to hurt that guy. He was bigger and stronger. And that's why I embarrassed him in front of his friends, broke his windshield, and broke his mirror. I also broke his heart. I think that's pretty bad. Story 11. Caught my BF of four years cheating on me with my ex-best friend. I walked in on them hooking up. I just stood there, in shock, and they just lay on the bed speechless. I turned around and walked out the door. I was almost to my car and he came running out apologizing. I asked how long it had been happening paused for a minute and then said six months. I just got in my car and went home to my dad's. The next day he came into my dad's house asking to get some stuff he had kept there. My dad walked out to greet him with a shotgun in hand and told him to get the screw off his property before he blew his kneecap off. Never saw him again. Although I did hear he got married and has five kids and cheated on his wife. Now divorced. Karma. Story 12. When I was 18 I decided to skip class one morning and surprise my on off again boyfriend. We'd been together for about three years, but the months prior to this were extremely rocky. I stopped at a few pay phones to try to call ahead, but no one picked up. Okay, I thought, no problem, I'll just go and wake him up. As I crept up the stairs with two honeydew iced coffees, one in each hand, I heard a female laugh. Hmm, his little sister must have stayed home from school. I turned the corner and entered his room to find him laying in bed with some half-naked girl. I froze up and all I could say was, hi. He said hi back and we stared at each other for a minute before I ran out of the house. He chased me outside while proclaiming the infamous, it's not what it looks like line. As I was about to get into my car, I screamed, but she's freaking ugly at the top of my lungs. His response, he screamed, I know, as loud as he could. That poor girl. I wish I had thrown the iced coffee at them instead. Story 13. I'd been suspicious for a little while. I was away from work. We had fought on the phone the night before because I was suspicious. 
I came home the next day unscheduled to apologize and make her a nice dinner before she went into the night shift feeling like a jerk for doubting. So I pull onto our road and there's a strange car in the driveway. I walk into the house and into my bedroom and there's a strange person in my bed. They were both sleeping in pajama clothes. I shook her awake and said, what the hell, and left. She caught me on the porch and we argued. I left so he could leave without me being compelled to violence. Came back and talked more. I found out he had slept there several times when I was out working. She, to this day, won't admit to sleep. Gave her the diamond earrings I had bought for her birthday the next week, then moved out a couple of weeks later. We tried to work it out, but I was no longer willing to overlook things. It died out when I finally got so depressed, I shut down. Seems like a good use of eight years. The worst part is, ah, I still love her. Story 14. I woke up to him bed my friend next to me in the same bed. I got up, put my clothes on, and drove home, broke all the plates in the kitchen. Sorry, there isn't more justice. I had a staff party all day, text him afterward asking if I could come over and stay as we had broken my bed the previous night. All was well, some of our friends were already there, so we played drinking games. However, the drinking and the partying all day got to me, so I bailed to go to bed. A little while later, I woke up because I felt movement and saw them. I got out of bed, shaking, and started to put on my clothes. He had the gall to ask me where I was going. I just replied, I have to leave. My quote-unquote friend got out of bed and tried to hug me. I put my hand on her face and pushed her back onto the bed and left. He followed me out the front and told me I was being ridiculous, but I just ignored him, jumped in my car, and left. I was a bottle of tequila down and really shouldn't have been driving, but I really didn't know what else to do. I mean, what can you do? Story 15. Never date a whore. She was at a party for a guy we knew that was killed in Afghanistan. I couldn't make it because of work. I got out of work around midnight and gave her a call to see how things were going and I can immediately tell that she was hammered, which wasn't a problem. She said she had just gotten home, she lived two doors down from where the party was, but then I heard a guy's voice in the background. Who is that? I asked her before she promptly hung up. So I called again and a guy picks up the phone this time. She doesn't want to talk to you, freak. Oh, so he wants to talk to me like that? I don't think so. So I rushed over to her house and walked in. I found them in her bed in the dark and flipped on the lights. She started crying and the guy stood up. It was the brother of the kid that just got killed. I need to add that at the time I was 19 years old and pretty scrappy. At this point in my life, I had been boxing on and off for about three years and all I wanted to do was utterly demolish this guy, but I didn't. I knew that this guy had just lost his brother and was going through a lot, so the last thing he needed was me beating his ass. So here I am with a look of disbelief and he turns to me and says, screw you freak, don't say a single word to me or I'll kill you. Are you kidding me? Needless to say, I snapped. I cracked him in the jaw with a quick jab. I pulled him close and whispered in his ear. Your brother was a great man. Should have been you that got killed over there and not him. I then let him go and walked out. I never said a word to her again. I guess I lied to you guys. I ended up breaking down and calling her a few months later and that spiraled into a few more months of hell and getting played. My advice for anyone that gets cheated on is to cut all contact and don't be ashamed of feeling hurt over it. Pain is just weakness leaving the body. Also, if boxing has taught me anything, it's that violence solves nothing. What ho did wasn't right, but my reaction to it wasn't right either. That being said, sometimes stuff happens. Story 16. Went to her apartment, saw her hooking up with some guy I'd never seen before. Before I can say anything, she says, It isn't what it looks like. I crack up. Who the hell even says that when they're caught cheating? While I'm laughing, I manage to ask her what it is if it's not what it looks like. After a little bit of wear, she tries to come up with an excuse. I tell her we're through and I walk out. Weirdest five minutes of that year.